Ladies and gents, this is the moment you've been waiting for, a podcast for podcasters. This is Creating the Greatest Show, and I'm your host, Casey Cheshire. Join me as we interview podcast hosts and investigate the ingredients of a successful interview podcast. We'll talk mistakes, earned skills, powerful questions, and more. This show is sponsored by Ringmaster, completely done for you, B2B podcast production. Recording to the cloud. Uh, you know what? I've gotten to the age where I'm just telling people what I'm doing on the computer. I don't know. I think I need to seek help for that. But what I don't need is help with this next interview because I can't wait to introduce you to the guest today. Honestly, we spent about half an hour on a, on a pre-show having a blast and it was way funny. So now the rest of the show will not be funny just because we got it all out of our systems. Well, maybe we'll bring some back in, but let me tell you, she is absolutely fantastic. Her podcast, her style. Well, who is she, Casey? Well, she's a speaking strategist, a master coach, an author, a speaker, a podcast host. Okay. That rhymed. We're coming up on the holiday season. I don't know how that happened, but let's just say, look, she, she helps people leverage speaking opportunities. You have a speaking opportunity. Don't, don't just carelessly look at it and hope that it does well for you and your business. No, capitalize on it. And that's what she does. So I can't wait to just learn from her. She's written two books. She is the author of Rethink Leadership and Rethink Your Leadership. Two shows, Be In Demand, a podcast, and also Contagious Leadership, a live stream. Without Further ado, Lorianne Morabito. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited to have this conversation and share my knowledge with your audience. So thank my you so goodness. much for inviting me. Absolutely. It was crazy. I actually messed up the introduction of your name, but we just magically edited it out so that I sounded perfect. That's Isn't right. that just crazy? That's right. I've done that before. I've actually um, introduced a guest and I didn't pronounce her name correctly. And she was like, leave it. She was, just, you know, because we were like, we're imperfect humans. Yeah, so it was just a little bit of evidence. She was like, I don't care. And I said, great. I said, I'm just going to leave it because we're just being real. <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. And if I didn't totally butcher it beyond belief, that would totally still be in the show. But I would have saved you. <laughs> I would have just been like, just, I, I, I'll just talk over you or something. <laughs> right, right. Well, and that's the great thing about this show is everything is so meta. Like we're, we're talking about what we're doing at the exact same time. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it gets weird and creepy. I, I once had someone say that if, if, they don't, if they don't feel good about the podcast or um, if someone invites them on a prep call, they hate them. I was like, well, thanks for joining my prep call. <laughs> you're like, no, no, you're different. You're different. We were catching up. So uh, it was all good, but I'm so glad you're here. I can't wait to learn from you. So with that, Lorianne, pull back the curtain for us on your show and share your most important strategy for a great interview podcast. So to have a great interview, it's it really, it's about the pre. It's all the stuff that you do beforehand like maybe a little bit of research on your guest, but really the other thing that I do, because I want to make the eye contact because I record my shows just like you're doing right here on zoom. So I want to look into the camera. I don't want to be looking down at my notes because then I'm really disconnected from the person I'm interviewing. So I also use the chat here in zoom so that I can just easily just look over there and say, okay, here's the next question or here's another topic. And I also word those questions when I've gotten those questions from my guest, but I will word them so that they sound conversational. Interesting. Okay. A lot of things here. So the chat feature on Zoom, uh, fantastic. And then also wording them. Let's talk about the chat. So I'm even looking at our chat right now. We can't share this on the screen because it's a Zoom thing. People won't see it. But so you've written, uh, these are notes for you when you're speaking. And then also you do the same thing when you're hosting. I mostly do this for when I'm hosting. Hosting. Okay. Hosting a podcast. Um, I did this um, here today because we had already talked about what we were going to like share yeah. on the show. And so now I have like an idea of some of the different areas that you wanted to sort of touch on to help your audience. Wow. Okay. Um, and I won't, I, I won't that. spoil all the things we have in the <laughs> yeah, chat yeah. here because we're yeah, actually going to use them. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But what a cool, and, and what that does for you is it keeps you focus on the zoom window because they're literally right here. Do you, do you like move the window? So it's right under the camera. Like, 
can I, I don't think I can tell whether you're looking at me. No, it's or, like right off to the side. Yeah, it's so. But it's I'm so, also the one who I typed it. I physically wrote it already. Yeah. So part of that was, so I already know what, what it is. So I can literally just like glance over there and I can tell you what the next tip is. Right. Just it, It's almost like a teleprompter, right? Just a little thing yeah. in front of your face to remind you. Mm-hmm. And that helps you from not having to look down or around or anything like mm-hmm. that. Interesting. And for anybody who doesn't feel comfortable or isn't using the chat, maybe you're being interviewed, then I would tell you to use sticky notes on your screen. Oh, Okay. You know, you as either you're doing the interviewing or you're being interviewed and there's like, you want to make sure that let's just say like, there's some data points that you want to share during your interview. And, you know, like maybe you get them mixed up or something, like just put them on a sticky note and just stick them on the screen. I mean, yeah. don't, cover, don't cover the camera, but <laughs> you cover I it. I thought I had to like, say that. You have a yellow hue to the rest of the podcast. <laughs> yes. yes. Oh man. So that's, so I just like, you want to connect mm. with your guest because if we connect, then our audience is going to feel like they are a part of this conversation. Exact same thing that I do when I'm on stage. And what I teach my clients is, you know, you're not speaking to everybody all at once, you know, and like passing over like their heads with your eye contact. No, you speak to one person at a time, you know, sharing some information And then you move your eyes to like another person, maybe a further in the back of the room closer so that everybody just feels like they're a part of your conversation. And it's it's interesting because podcasting enables you to do that Mm. because you, instead of looking at a wall and that's why I I do like video and I know you do video as well. Not everyone I've talked to on the show does. Got to do video. They just, they don't want to, do their hair in the morning, I guess. I don't know. I mean, let's touch on easier for me. Let me just put that out there. (laughs) Well, me too. I mean, it just, it just takes a little bit of effort. Let's talk about the video, but let me just add one more thing that I please add for before I start, before I hit record with my guest, I asked my guest, what would make this a great interview, a great podcast interview or episode for them? You know, if they just want it to be very conversational, it'll be very conversational. If there's something that's coming up that they're going to be promoting, you know, mm. great. Then I'm, I'm going to make sure that I focus on that, that I bring that up. And again, like I do this all very conversational so that the audience just feels, you know, like, so just so that it's, it feels like a flowy conversation and not very choppy. Yeah. You know, I just spoke with uh, the great and powerful John Barrows, who is a sales trainer. And he had like almost a di- completely different approach. He is like having to protect his show from would be fellow sales hustlers coming on and just promoting and pitching the whole time. So he tells them, like, don't you dare pitch. And if you do, I'm going to end the episode and we're not going to air it. So behave yourself. Uh, and this is the opposite of that, but I feel like the measure of, you're setting expectations and boundaries, like don't do this, but, but I do want to know this. So I feel like I'm glad I've had both of these conversations because I know, okay, you know, set your boundaries and your expectations for the guests, but also ask them what theirs would be and what would be successful for them. Because they're also going to be promoting my podcast to their audience. Yes. If they enjoyed their time, right? Like if they had a good time. They yes, hopefully. Yeah. And that I'm in, I'm introducing them to my audience. I mean, that's the beauty of speaking, you know, and podcast is a form of speaking is that it's OPA other people's audiences. That's what speaking does for you. It puts you in front of other people's audiences, leverage OPA. So by me, letting them talk about what they do. And if there's any program or any freebie, you know, that they have, you know, like they have an opportunity for people that are in my audience, you know, to join their email list, to sign up for their freebie, to maybe join a program, join a Facebook group that they run. There's so many different things. Hey, what, what a, a simple, powerful question to ask. I don't think I've ever been asked that. Mm -hmm. Right on a show. And I don't think, I mean, I don't think I asked that. So it, I feel like that's something I want to add to my prep call 
is asking that. So I, cause I would love to know, cause I, even if it's something like, okay, they have a newsletter, they have a book, they have a this, they have a that, but knowing that they in particular really want to get the word out about the new book. I talked to someone who has like four or five books and one was just coming out. And that was the special thing for him. Yeah, And that came out, but I didn't ask him specifically, but just to know that would be so cool. Cause then you could, you could weave it in yourself. And you know, every time you weave it in, it's just like making them smile. Like angels are getting their wings and bells are yes. chiming. And yeah, what a cool thing you could do for other people. So check, do that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it, it makes it much less transactional too, right? It's yes. Yes. It's like exactly. I'm here to help you and have a good conversation. And if I'm taking care of your promotion, then you don't have to. And I think it also sounds better if it comes from you than it does from the guests. Cause like you're promoting them as opposed to them promoting them. Yes. Cause I'll even ask them like towards the end. I mean, don't you, you know, like I'll, I'll even point out, like you have this great, like, checklists, this great video series, you host your own podcast. So I'll even like roll out the red carpet for them to like promote themselves too. Yeah. Smart, smart. I mean, it's only fair if they're going to provide their wisdom and knowledge and exactly all that kind of good stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, Super cool. Okay. So let's just touch on this video thing. Yeah, please. Because I know there's so many people out there just like, I don't feel comfortable in front of video. I don't like the way I look on video. Okay. So first off, first off, Learn how to use your settings in Zoom. That's mm. number one. Zoom can make you look good. Zoom can brighten up your room. Zoom can darken your room. You know, Zoom can smooth I, your face, I believe. Yes, they can, it can. Yep. And I, I mean, I use it. Totally. Little I, ha- I have touch up my that. appearance on Max because I have a face made for radio. So it's like, it, I, I wish Zoom had like a little extra, like pay an extra $5 a month you know, and, and they'll just do an even more or they'll sub in someone else's face, you know, and they, you, know, you should just, you know, you want to like <laughs> give them that idea. <laughs> well, you're right. Like zoom can definitely smooth things out, especially as you have HD cameras and all that. Mm-hmm. So that's one thing. Yeah. Look at your own behavior. How many videos are you actually watching over reading written texts, mm. you know, and also listening to audio? I mean, like, one of the things that I like to do every once in a while is like, I will ask my audience. And when I say, ask my audience, like an email, like, Hey, are you, you know, do you prefer podcast? Do you prefer Facebook? It's like, I'll ask them questions. Yeah. And a lot of, a lot of people are saying like, I watch short, short form video. Mm-hmm. I'll, wa- I'll watch, I'll listen to a podcast from YouTube. So keep that in mind. Look at your own behavior. And if you're afraid of creating video, but you love consuming video, like there's a mismatch there. People love video. And the reason, the other reason why I love video is that you get a sense of my personality. Uh huh. So totally. create some video because that's how we're building that know, like, and trust really fast. For sure. Like you're constantly smiling, which just makes my day happier. <laughs> right. You. And then I get a Thank sense for who you are. Otherwise we're trying to pick that out of, of the, of the ether of just hearing it. And I think the other thing too, is it definitely keeps the guest focused, right? There's a little bit of that accountability because I've heard people, well, yeah, if I don't have video on, I'm just doing other things. As long as the sound is good, I'm, you know, and then your guest is checking their email, but there's something about being on a visual stage where it's even more embarrassing to be visually out of the loop and not paying attention than it is to be just audio. Right. right. And all you have to do, you know, one is be dressed appropriately from the waist up essentially, and just look in the camera, you know, make sure. And I do this all the time before, before I get onto to to a zoom um, is I clean the camera because it is, you know, I'm working from a laptop. And it is positioned in a in like the center of your screen. And that's basically where I'm opening and closing my laptop. So it can get a little bit of oil and fingerprints. So just wipe it. Yes. Is how that will change things. <laughs> oh, yeah. And this is just totally re- re- telling me that I need to have like a, a checklist for right before recording. You yes. Know? Couple things, couple key things: checking my sound, clean the camera, mm-hmm. 
you know, settings. There's a bunch of things. The, Audio. Good call. Yeah. Clean the camera, people. Yeah. So create more video. I mean, I'm creating video with, with my podcast guests and that goes over to YouTube. Mm -hmm. And am I repurposing it? Not quite yet. Mm -hmm. But I, but I have the video that I will be able to cut it up into small, short form videos. God, love that. Right, right. And then, and then, yeah, yeah. Might as well. Yeah, you're already chatting. <laughs> right. Might as well record both. Even right. If you don't use it right now. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. We also put uh, short promo clips on LinkedIn. We find that sometimes those will get, you know, ten times more views because they're short and quick and they're on a platform already. Mm -hmm. So, you know, your, you know, video may, your podcast may get 60 downloads, but your clip had a thousand views, you know? So it's like, don't pass up on a thousand views. Yes. Yes. Totally agree with all of that. Hell yeah. <clears throat> so good. So do you do a prep call with your guests? Before I don't normally do a prep call unless it's somebody that I don't know. Or it's somebody, because like a lot of times people will refer people like at the end of the show, I'm going to ask you to refer me to some other podcasts that oh, you cool. know of that I'll be like, so that's, and I, I think we're going to talk about this later, or I'd let's like talk about to talk right about how, about how speaking just snowballs. Yeah. Let's talk about it. Okay. <clears throat> so any speaking event, whether it's you're on a podcast or you're speaking on a stage or even a virtual stage, or you're a guest expert in some sort of a mastermind at the end, ask your guest or host, whoever invited you, you know, because hosts, guests, coaches, people that are running masterminds, et cetera, they all know other people that are similar to them. So ask them, who do you know that my story my information would best serve their audience. Just ask them for one or two names. So now one podcast can turn into two more that can then turn into another two more. So you're talking about another four that that can then turn into eight. Like it easily snowballs, whether it's a speaking event, you know, or podcast guesting. And I'm also a big connector that once I've either been on someone's podcast or they've been on my podcast, I will introduce them to other, other people like, Hey, you'd be a great guest for this podcast or, you know, and vice versa. Like I'm constantly thinking of other people. Wow. It's such a good point that I know sometimes at the end of a podcast, your brain is mush, you know, from just all of that. But if you do have the chat notes or I have like a Google doc uh, with uh, the outline and some, some questions at the end, put a reminder that says, Hey, mushy head, you know, I know you're tired, but don't forget to ask, you know, who else should I talk to on this show? Do you know any, who else would be good for this show? Or what other shows do you recommend I, I, I guest on if you're a guest? Exactly. And, you know, the um, live stream show that I do for, over on LinkedIn, Contagious Leadership, um, I'm just going to share with your audience how this came to be, because I'm not sure you know how I became a co-host on this show. No. <clears throat> I was introduced to the host, Rigo. We had a pre-call and we're like, finally, like we settle on a date that I'm going to be on the show and he's got a co-host. The day I show up was the day that she was like, I can't do this anymore. She was in a completely different industry, you know, had just was swamped with clients. And I just kind of said to him, um, and I don't even know like what possessed me to say this, but you know, again, every once in a while, you know, that's just what happens. I say my outside voice is taking over. And I said to him, well, if this goes well, maybe I'll be your co-host thinking it was just going to be for, oh, I'll just help him out for a couple of months. Here it is. We're six months later. <laughs> and mm -hmm. it's like, it has become quite like I've gotten more involved in the show and that's what I do. I started asking the guests, who do you know? That would be a great guest for our show. And I can tell you that Rico was like, oh, what a great idea. Like, if you love this person, you know, gold stars hang around with gold stars. Right. That's what I believe. So they're going to know other people. Yeah. So tap into that. Absolutely. And, and you've got that trust now. You've just spent some time with each other. It's not like you're just casually asking a random stranger. You're asking someone you've just spent a good chunk of time with and hopefully you, you built some kind of rapport and mm -hmm. they would be they'd be perfectly willing to do that and just ask right 
Yeah. And if they had a good time, which most of our guests do, you know, they're going to, oh, I know exactly who you should also interview. Yeah. Easy. Snowballs. Yeah. And you can see it. And then then you're like on all these different podcasts and what's going on. It's crazy. Yeah. So why, I mean, like, it's a lot of work to like find a podcast Mm -hmm. and, you know, do a cold pitch and do all the, this pre stuff where, you know, instead of like ending there and all right, let me go back to square one again. No, just, just make the ask. Make the ask. It, there's something about, I mean, going back to square one, there are podcast bookers out there, right? Who yeah. charge you buco money, lots of money to do mm-hmm. what you could just ask with a single sentence after a great mm-hmm. interview. Easy. Easy. Easy peasy. Well, right. I, you know, you, I've, I've watched your shows and you just have so much fun doing them. And I would just I'd love to know, what do you personally get out of podcasting? What, what boxes mm-hmm. does that check for you? Uh, one is connection. Connection is one of my highest values. So I get to have this personal time with somebody and really connect with them. Um, and at times, like really at a deep level, like we will talk about stuff that it's like, oh yeah, I forgot this is going to go public, but it's a, it's a great conversation and we're willing to share that. So that's one, um, taking advantage of OPA, other people's audiences, that's definitely another, but I also do a lot of solo episodes myself, but having a podcast is my, basically it's, it's a way to tap in to my world, learn about speaking without making any big commitment. You know, it's my, it's, it doesn't cost you anything to come and listen to my podcast and you'll get some great value. So it's also my way of building that know, like, and trust with my audience. Right. So that when I'm pitching my program or my one-on-one coaching, my clients are going to be like, or the, excuse me, not my clients, but the audience. It's going to be like, you know what? I've been learning a lot. I really enjoy your podcast. I'm going to sign up for like that sales call. Because right. people do, they are in my audience. They'll be listening to my podcast and they'll be like, you know what? I really want to start leveraging speaking. I'm all about what Lorian is talking about and teaching. So it's like right in the show notes, book a call with me. Right. So it's my, it's another form of speaking and I'm leveraging the platform. Tell me about connection. You said it was one of your highest values. Um, What is it about podcasting that lends itself so well to connection? I'm so on a solo episode, I am in my audience's earbuds. I'm in their ears, like, you know, whether they're just cleaning the house, whether they're driving, you know, to pick up the kids or go grocery shopping or at the gym, they're on the treadmill or something, you know, like, so I'm in their personal space. And I actually try to like my solo episodes that I'm talking to one person. So I'm not trying to talk to a huge audience, like thousands of people at at the same time, I'm just talking to one. Yeah. And so that's how I want my listener to feel. I want them to feel like she's just talking to me. Wow. And with my guest episodes, I'm going to connect with my guest at a deep level so that my listener, the audience actually feels like they're sitting right next to us at like a coffee shop and they're just, and they're listening to this conversation and they feel like they're a part of it. Have you ever interviewed multiple people at the same time? And not yet, not yet. Cause I'd love your take on it. You should try it sometime because I feel like you just get a little bit less of that connection because there's, Mm -hmm. there's two people there. Um, it's also why I don't have necessarily in my amazing producer, Sam, join this call because I want it to be just the two, two of us. And yes, it will go out to millions and millions of our fans, right, but, right. but it's just the two of us. But somehow when you add that third person in there, it's not this sort of one-on-one we're looking at each other. Now there's like two people and well, it's almost like you're moderating a panel. Well, um, I guess it depends on, on how you approach it because like the contagious leadership show with Rigo, we have a guest. True. So two hosts, right? Two hosts. Yeah, and so a it's guest. two hosts, one guest. 
but you know, sometimes, you know, like Rigo's got ADD, you know, and I sort of, we sort of have to have this conversation, even when we're live, he gets off on tangents. Yeah. You know, that's just, that's just who he is. And so like, so me as the other co-host, sometimes I have to reel him back in. <laughs> Do you have any advice? Um, Because I was literally talking. This is great. So we were talking about two guests, but in this case, two hosts. I feel like you have more control over two hosts because then you can at least talk beforehand. Um, And it can get a little chaotic, though, still. But I, one of the things, like, before the Contagious Leadership Show, I tell our guests that we're going to interrupt you. So hopefully you don't mind that. But it's going to be like a conversation around the kitchen table. So for my, for a solo episode, or I shouldn't say like a solo, but, but with my guest episodes with myself on my podcast, Be In Demand, it's like being in a coffee shop is my analogy. Like we're having a conversation, but there isn't a whole lot of interrupting, but on the Contagious Leadership Show, because it's the three of us, and that's the energy that we want. We want it to be like, we are sitting at the kitchen table and that's just naturally what happens is that people start to like, wait, 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 wait. I want to dive deeper into that particular point before we move on. You know, like, so that that's where the interrupting comes in. And I just started to warn our guests, uh, mostly for myself, because I didn't want them to think that I was rude, like stopping them and interrupting them. Just like, hey, this is what's going to happen. So lots of um, just letting people know, like warning people, like this is the energy of the show. This is what's going to happen. You know, if you do have a tendency to interrupt people, like just let them, let your guests know. So they're not surprised. Right. Right. I love the analogy of the coffee shop versus the kitchen table and that you let them know this is the environment they're joining. I feel like it's so important to let people know the energy they're, they're about to be taking part in. Like, is this going to be dry? Is this Sam Harris, is, am I going to interrupt you the whole time? Or is this going to be, you know, what's it going to be like? Yeah. Uh, and, but giving people the heads up of that. T- t- I want to stay on the two host thing for a bit because I definitely have uh, worked with people who have done that. I've done it uh, for a little bit. Any tips, any, you know, experiences you can share with us around making it successful when you have two people in that command seat? I would say you got to know your roles. So like with Contagious Leadership, um, Rigo starts the show. We have the intro music and then he does start the conversation right after that. Like we have like a little bit of chit chat and even that, like we're, we're always molding this and, and modif- making modifications. Sure, sure. And then we like, you know, we turn it over to our guests to introduce themselves And then we know what we're going to be talking about, what the show is actually going to be focused on. But other than that, it's really about knowing your co-host because Rico and I now have been working together for enough time that I can see when like, all right, he's getting distracted. There must, there must be something like every once in a while we get some sort of a troll from YouTube that's starting to like leave no. all these obnoxious messages. A troll in YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Go figure. Like they're, they're very rare. So I will continue the conversation with the guest, knowing that Rigo is going to go take care of it. Oh, oh like on like on chat. Right. Well, not even on chat. It's just like I know like he's already seen it. He knows that it's happening. And because it's it's happened to us twice. And the very first time it happened, I put in our private chat somebody take care of the troll. You know, afterwards, he was like, I thought you were talking about me. (laughs) I was like, no, no, no. I just wanted like, you know, somebody to take care of that. So it's about reading each other's body language, but that comes with time. Right. So if it is live, you can teamwork the trolls and you, you you know, it's all your, your messaging behind the scenes. Are you using zoom message to do that? How are you Um, in the contagious leadership show? We actually use restream. Restream. Okay. Yes. But for my guest episodes, you know, I would just, you know, I would just use, I, I use Zoom like, like what you do. But so if I was to have two guests, I guess, you know, it is about setting the tone. We're talking around the kitchen table, you know, so I would just tell people like, don't feel like you have to be like uber polite and wait for a break in the conversation. Like, just let's have a conversation. You know, and sometimes it's like you chit chat beforehand, before you start hitting record. That kind of warms everybody up. 
And I also would recommend that if you were going to do that, this is, I used to do this in the beginning when I um, first started recording my podcast is there were a couple of questions that I would ask my guests, like, what are you most proud of? Okay. Um, you know, like what, and what book are you reading? And they would catch my guest off guard. They didn't know I was going to ask these questions, but it was just to just kind of like warm them up and just like, all right, like, great. Like we've gone deep a little bit. Let's continue the conversation now. Gotcha. Gotcha. So good. I love, I mean, I love this show because I just get to learn, go to school. Let's talk solos. You talked a little bit about how solo episodes you're talking to one person in their ears yes and tell me more about that any any tips especially because i your background as as a speaking coach and trainer and strategist how how do we do a great solo episode okay keep in mind i'm going to tell you about my very first one Yes. Very first episode. So I'm fortunate enough that I have a walk-in closet. So I'm going to go. That's where I'll go. That's a, it's a great sound booth, if you will. And so I went into my closet and I started to record. I stopped. I did it again. Delete. Start again. Delete. And I came out of my closet. I was just like, oh my God, I can't do this. I mean, like having like little adult temper tantrum. Yeah. And I reminded myself, Florian, your podcast recording muscle is weak. You've never done this before. I've been a guest, but now all of a sudden I'm talking to my sweaters and blouses. (laughs) Okay. So what I did was I remember hearing the story from Gary about Gary V. And I can't remember if he told the story or if somebody was telling the story about him, but when he did his first live stream, he didn't want to talk to nobody. He'd wanted to feel like he was talking to somebody. So he got a stuffed teddy bear and he put it on the, on like some sort of like a little bar stool, some sort of chair, he hung it up. That was on the other side of the camera. So he was talking to the teddy bear. So I went and did the next best thing. And I found a picture that was hanging around of me and a girlfriend when we were on some trip down to down in Florida And I just, and I put that in my closet. So I was talking to her. I love that. And so, and after a while, you just, you build up your podcast recording muscle and it gets easier and easier and easier. But I want to remind everybody, we all start with one. Yes. Is the, talk to me about the perfectionism, because I feel like there's a little more flexibility when you have two people riffing, you can have the ums because it's natural conversation and pauses and yeah. interruptions. But when you're so low, it, there's, the, I've had the tendency. I remember trying to record even a 30 second sponsor ad for a podcast and somehow wanting it to be perfect. And then doing the same thing you did record, 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 Hand, head down on my hands, like, oh, I'm, ne- I'm never going to get this right. And thankfully, someone right. on my team was like, you can do this. You got this. And I went and did it again and, and nailed it. But man, there's that, there's that desire to be perfect when solo. How, how do you work with that? Well, I tell people that ums are normal. So if you go listen to my podcast, you're going to hear ums and ahs. If there's a lot of them, like my team knows to cut out the long pauses if I sort of repeat myself, like they, that's their job is to make me look like a rock star. Yeah. Basically. But if there's an occasional, um, in there, like it's, that's just normal conversation. I don't strive for perfection anymore. Perfection, trying to be perfect. You're never going to get there. There's always going to be something else that's like, that isn't quite right. And it's just a form of procrastination and you're just not going to get your brilliance out there. So just, just put it out there. I do like, you know, um, before I record something like, I mean, I've I've got an idea of what I'm going to talk about and I just trust, literally close my eyes, take a few deep breaths and just trust that whatever I'm supposed to say is going to come out of my mouth. Yeah. I love that. Just... It's meant to be and the people are they're there for you or they're not. And you right. know what? Honestly, people don't really want to watch, you know, perfection on CNN. No, they don't. They don't the, at all. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah there's even a, a marketing um, online marketing podcast. We were talking about this for a second where uh, big, you know, little companies were trying to make their photos look great and their videos look great, but bigger companies, giant companies were trying to actually reduce the quality of their photos and filming so that it didn't read so corporate. So, <laughs> so it's so funny that people, I want to make mine look so professional and people are like, I want to make mine look so amateur. Uh, so when in doubt, just be yourself. I think that's the difference. That's where the podcasting has really come is that everyone now is okay with just being real. We want it. We seek it. Yeah. Reality TV has made being real like the norm now. Right. So just, you know, I would just say you just want really good audio equipment recording because people will forgive. Like if, if we didn't have good lighting here, people will forgive bad video, but if they can't hear you, they're going to move on to the next podcast, the next video. So I would just say like audio, just really good audio. You know, it's so true. Um, the most brilliant speaker in the world, best guest you could ever have. And if their audio is on AirPods, people, right. I just, and I'm doing the same thing. I would bounce instantly. I, I can't, I can't do it or clicking in the background, mm-hmm. you know, something, it just, you got to get rid of that. Um, yes. You got to be a bit of a, a tough, you got to be tough about the sound. Yeah. You got to stand up and have some standards. Yes, that. Absolutely. Um, it, perfect segue. You just like, you're my like perfect segue partner uh, in this, in this equation here. So challenges, everything's grand with podcasting, but what are your biggest challenges? Um, what is your biggest challenge? I, part of my biggest challenge is, is sometimes is finding good guests that are appropriate for my audience. Cause a lot of people like I will get people who are pitching me and I, I want to know, I want to hear you. If I don't know you, I need to hear or watch a video because I need, um, I mean, I've had some people from other parts of the world who are pitching me to be on my podcast and they can't speak English really well. Well, you're not a good fit for my podcast. Um, that's one thing, but also staying on topic. Right. Um, another one is when I ask people to introduce themselves You can tell like they haven't prepared this. Have your intro. I mean, it shouldn't be some five minute, 10 minute dissertation. You know, when I say like, well, you know, like tell my audience about yourself. Well, back in high school, I was (laughs) don't quite want to go back that far. Um, So that that's another thing. So finding good guests, you know, and especially like when you're pitching, because as a podcast host, I'm sure that you get a ton of pitches. And yeah, sometimes yeah. Oh, like, yeah. do, you, do you ever like look at the pitch and you're like, did you even listen to one of my episodes? Just- Most of my worst guests come from pitches. One out of 10 pitched guests makes it. And then one out of three of those is actually really good. So I don't but even what know is why it I about, do it. All right. So this is interesting. What is it about the ones that pitch you that don't even make it? Uh, well, with some of the bad pitch. It, yeah. It's, not even in the realm of what my show does, right? Hey, we're a B2B marketing podcast. And this is someone who does elephant counting. Like it's not even in the realm and other people, it, it just, they, the, um, maybe it's not significance. It's not, uh, they don't have something interesting to talk about. It's kind of the job of the booker to make it look like that. So mm-hmm. it's, I mean, they need your help because essentially <laughs> they could be the smartest person in the world. And what they're presenting is not, Something yeah. that I would want to talk to. Yeah. I would say it's the the novel pitch. The novel, yeah. Thank yeah, you. You know, the, yeah. you know the pitch that goes on and on. Like I don't need to know how wonderful you are. Just I think to keep it short. Yeah. Short to like a paragraph. All you're asking is what's your process for choosing guests, and mm. here's what I talk about. If you think this would be interesting to your audience. Let's have a conversation about that. Short, sweet, to the point. I love that. Do you have a template of that? Like, do you have that templated? Um, I think I do. <laughs> you should. And then literally what you should do is give people your contact information. In fact, how can people contact you? And let's say maybe they contact you on LinkedIn or email or something. And then you could send them because I'd love to see that template because yeah, that sounds I actually, great. I actually, yeah, I do have this, have this, um, as a template, uh, I usually give this to my clients because I actually have a cold pitch 
and a warm pitch, but this is definitely like what we're talking about is a cold pitch. Yeah. So if you find me on either LinkedIn, you know, or even Instagram is where I hang out the most. Um, you can just send me a message that says, Hey, Lorianne, really want that template, you know, that, that pitch to, to temp, you know, that, sorry, I'm like stumbling on my words here. Yeah. The, well, that's because I just um, invented it for you, but it, I, I, would, right. I would, I would the do that. Right? I would contact you right now. People. Yeah. And this is the same, the exact same pitch for speaking opportunities. Yes. Like stages and zoom, you know, those things, like they're all coming back. So What's you can criteria? use this exact template for not just podcast guesting. And, so and practicing one, being on a podcast, I'm sure it helps you practice for being on that big stage and eventually being a keynote. Yes, absolutely. So that's, that's one place. And also you can find me on my podcast, which is Be In Demand with Lorianne. And my website is speakandstandout.com. Love that. Speak and stand out. Well, final question for you. If we chat again, 50 episodes from now on your podcast, what do you want that to look like? What do I want that to look like? I want to see that my, my process has streamlined even more so that it's much easier for me. I want to be repurposing my podcast even more like creating not just written contact, but also short form videos, more clips. Um, That's what I, that's like, it's really more of a streamlined um, system because I know that the more streamlined it is, the easier it is for me to do. And then it, and then it frees me up for more promotion. Yeah. Sharing it with more people because the stuff that I'm sharing on my, on my podcast, I want to get out there because Pub- learning public speaking skills is probably one of the best things that you can ever learn. Right. And as a reform, painfully shy girl, you know, <laughs> public speaking changed my world. Mm. Thank you. For I that. can't wait. Let's, let's chat again. We don't have to wait for 50 episodes, but I can't wait to see yes. 50 episodes from now when your podcast does exactly that and is repurposed everywhere so that mm. everyone who needs to hear and get better and who doesn't need to get better at speaking right. uh, can find you through those channels and find that content. That'd be amazing. Thank you so much for being on here. Thank uh, you. I've had fun and I've learned. I wish this is what school was like when I was <laughs> right. <laughs> like, this was great. Like I so many takeaways, so many things I need to do now after this podcast. Oh, wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you so much. It was, this was a great conversation. You're a great host, by the way. Well, thank you. And coming from a professional speaking trainer, uh, I will I will write that one down. I will I will clip that from the episode and great use that as an alarm clock wake up. <laughs> <laughs> great, uh, so good. And for those listening, if you've learned something, and I freaking know you have because I literally have pages of notes over here, then share this you know, front and back, front and back. Um, Share this with someone else, uh, one person, nine people, 3,000. Who needs to hear this? Mm-hmm. A fellow podcaster, someone who could use some speaking training, have them reach out. And again, Lorraine, thank you so much. This is awesome. Thank you. All right, everyone. This has been a crazy cool episode of Creating the Greatest Show. We will see you all next time. And next time doesn't have to be next week. Life's too short and we have way too much to talk about. Find show notes full of takeaways, lessons, and links at creatingthegreatestshow.com. For more information on launching your own podcast or working with us to produce your existing show, come on down to the big tent at ringmaster.com. Until then, friends, whatever you do, do it with all your might. Work at it, if necessary, early and late, in season and out of season, not leaving a stone unturned and never deferring for a single hour. That which can be done just as well now. P.T. Barnum.